Hey guys, still there, and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon, where I'm having a look at the Ashen Shadows mod today. Now the first thing, if you install this mod, that you're going to notice is that the whole start screen has been changed. As you can see, the buttons on the left are now buttons.exe, the whole middle of the screen is ground0.wmv, and uh, the whole screen that you're looking at is no longer just a, I don't know, what was it, a computer, a laptop, back in the day? It's now a tough book. Over on the right, we also have some new buttons. Again, all of these are just uh, just images. They're not really doing anything, but I think it's a nice touch that these things have been adjusted as well. Now, in this video, I'll be looking at some of these units. I am not going to go over all of them. That would be insane, because there are so many units that have been changed. So many different units have been added, uh, units have been removed from the game, units have been added in different uh, combinations of nations. And um, I am just not capable of going over every single thing in one video. Uh, nor will I go over every single nation in a separate video, unless these particular mod videos get some sort of incredibly high view count. Anyway, um, let's quickly go through some of these nations. Oh, actually before I do that, we have some changed uh, combinations as you can see here. Uh, we have the Guten Dämmerung. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. There's a combination between Denmark, Sweden, correction, uh, Sweden, Norway and Germany. Interesting combination there. Then we have the Pan Pacific, Japan, Canada, and Australia. Blue Dragons are still intact. Um, this used to be, I think, the Dutch-German coalition. By the way, the whole Dutch group is gone. Uh, so this is now the Berla, sorry, Berra Berlik group, Turkey and Sweden. We have Norforce, United Kingdom, Canada and Denmark. Sorry, Norway, I keep messing up these flags. We have the Star of the East, consisting of India, Turkey, and Israel. The Visgrad Group, Poland and Czechoslovakia. Red Dragons, still intact as we had known them previously. Then we have the New World Order, no less, consisting of Czechoslovakia, Unisur. Um, I'm not really sure what this is, to be honest. China and Yugoslavia, and rogue states consisting of Yugoslavia, North Korea, and Egypt slash Syria. So those are new coalitions, and as the mod author has stated, you need to have the DLCs if you want to use these new combinations. Anyway, um, let's have a look at some of these units that we can find. Going into uh, logistics, you can find a command tank. Now, this is nothing unusual, but most command tanks do not have 23 points of frontal armor, uh, and they do not carry a smoothbore gun. Again, 160 points, quite expensive. You do not get that many of these, but they sure pack a punch, and they can withstand quite a lot of bombardment. Um, another unit of note is a uh, Humvee Toe 2B transporting command infantry. Again, quite unusual to see an actual fighting vehicle with that. Uh, Twin Huey, Black Hawk, uh, come to think of it, Black Hawks and generally all helicopters, unless they're large helicopters, have medium stealth. And that makes for some really, really interesting gameplay, as you can just more or less sneak a command helicopter into an area. Very, very fast helicopter here as well is the UH-1Y Venom. It's not as fast as the AH-1. That one comes in even faster at, I think, 350 kph. But still, this is a pretty heavily armed, well, transport helicopter for your command infantry. Command Helo, as I mentioned, medium stealth, very good optics. I think that Eugen at some point changed them to medium, maybe even good, but not very good. And speed on these things is very, very high at 300. Other than that, the transports themselves, nothing too special there. Uh, infantry, again, there is too much to go over here in detail. Interesting unit is the 101st Screaming Eagles, also known as 101st Airborne. Just your shock infantry, 
Um, they do not really come with any specific weapon that I find particularly interesting. The transports, though, do consist of the Dark Hawk. Now, the Dark Hawk is a Black Hawk, and as you can see, it is slightly more expensive than the standard transport helicopter, such as the normal Black Hawk, as the Dark Hawk is 26 points and the standard Black Hawk is 20 points. Uh, the Black Hawk comes equipped with the twin miniguns. So does, sorry, this one only comes with a minigun, but it has a very good stealth. So this one is more to quietly insert another uh, Special Forces group. And you can see the Dark Hawk as an available transport option for quite a few of these units. Then, the Javelin. One of the things that you need to know about this mod is that top armor now plays a vastly more important role. Some of these units have this tag, top attack. This weapon dives on its target or has a warhead that fires downwards when fire when it's over its target. It will strike the top armor of a target. Normally, a tank doesn't have that much top armor. So let's go back to the uh, Abrams Tusk that we have here. This one only has six top armor. Sure, it has 28 hit points. That's something else that I need to mention. Most of these units have far more hit points than you're normally used to. But it only has six top armor. Whereas if you want to attack the front or the side, you're going to need a lot more armor-piercing capability. So the top armor of six um, can quite easily be penetrated by the Javelin with 15 AP. So it's going to do far more damage than just firing this thing at the front of the tank. Also, it's a fire and forget. That's something you don't often see on infantry. Um, let's see, what else stands out? Uh, new transport, the AMPV. Comes with a Browning and a grenade launcher. Nice to have. Also, take note of the armor. Seven frontal armor, six on the side, three on the back, three on the top. This thing is pretty damn heavily armored and can, with a grenade launcher, be a very, very useful asset for your infantry as they're attacking other infantry or as you're just trying to do a little bit of morale damage to larger groups. Let's see, what else stands out? Uh, the Bradley has gotten the upgraded TOTU B missile and I think that most of the other stats are still similar. Uh, the National Guard. I was not able to find the standard riflemen. They are now classed as riflemen heavy. And if you compare the National Guard to the riflemen heavy, there is not that much of a difference, with the exception of an improved anti-tank weapon. You can see that this thing has a little bit more armor-piercing capability. Range is the same, accuracy slightly better. Um, training is still regular, but you're paying almost double for your riflemen versus the National Guard. I'm not really too sure why, because I wouldn't pay double just to have the AT4. I don't think it is that good. Anyway, moving on. Uh, we have the Strikers. These are another regular troop type. I'm not really too sure why these guys are so special, but I think it has to do with the s roll that they have over here, which is a top attacker, again, like the Javelin. Uh, US Marine CAAT. I can't say I know what that abbreviation stands for, so feel free to post that in the comments. US Marine Raiders. Uh, comes equipped with a small, it's a 15-man team, M18 CQBR. As you can see, this thing has some pretty nice stats. Also comes with a CQC uh, machine gun, and overall this 15-man squad at elite levels of training are going to be putting out a lot of damage. They're also coming in, and take note of this, the Pave Low MH-53J. Very fast helicopter at 320 kph, huge autonomy, 2000 kilometers, good optics, and it comes equipped with a 12.7 millimeter, um, I think, auto cannon. Uh, it's classed as a heavy machine gun, as well as twin miniguns. So the Raiders now come equipped with their own recon unit in the infantry tab, take note. Moving on, um, AA ranges have been significantly improved. As you can see here, this is the Hawk 11 or the Hawk XXI. Range, almost 9 kilometers with an 85% accuracy. Now if you thought that was good, Let's have a look at the Patriot. 95% accuracy, 15 HE, almost 9.5 kilometer range. These things do massive damage. 
Uh, I imagine they're going to take a long time to rearm as well. But this long range means that you can pretty much deploy two, maybe three on the map. And unless the enemy brings in some sort of seed aircraft, which now no longer just targets them, but also uh, pushes their radar out of function, it just negates the entire AA net. Um, unless they have those aircraft, it's going to be very difficult to dodge the Patriots. If you're looking for something at a slightly shorter range, you can always go for the Patriot Pack 3. Slightly less range, 6.5 versus almost 9.5. Uh, accuracy slightly lower, HE is slightly lower, but this thing carries 16 missiles versus the standard 4 on the Patriot. Also some new versions of the M270. Um, I'm not sure, but I think that this thing might have gotten a range boost, where it is now 105 kilometers. So even on the very largest of maps, you can still fire these things and probably hit something. High Mars. Um... Again, an HE thrower at a very good range, with, for rocket artillery, pretty damn good dispersion. And we have the M270 Atacam's um, LRPF. This one fires a tactical SRBM 19 HE, fires four 600 kg HE projectiles. Again, over range exceeding 50 kilometers. But note how accurate these things are. Very, very few artillery platforms have this level of accuracy. Um, other note with the unit over here is the linebacker. This is a version of the Bradley that does not come equipped with tow missiles but with stingers instead. And at six frontal armor, this thing can take a hit. Keep in mind, it also has 15 points of strength at the moment, so 15 hit points. And with that, it can withstand a hit. Um, I wouldn't put it at the utmost front line, but maybe at the line slightly behind your tanks. Now, one thing that you might be missing over here is the mortars. Normally the US has a nice selection of mortars available. Those are now in the vehicle tab. The vehicle tab houses for example the LAVM, uh, also the Cardom, the 1129, and this happens for most of the decks. So most of these now house their mortar section in the vehicle tab. Anyway, onto the tanks. Um, the heaviest vehicle that the US can field is the M1A2 SEP, um, I'm not 100% on this, but I think it stands for Service Extension Program. So you can see 24 frontal armor. Um, other than that, it has a very accurate gun, 75%, almost as accurate when you're firing it on the move. 26 points of penetration. And this is a kinetic round, which means that the closer you get, the more damage it will do. It has 30 hit points. Now, I played a game with these things, and they just do such incredible, or you need to do such incredible levels of devastation to these things that it's getting really, really hard to kill them. Again, that is the point, but attacking the top armor becomes vastly more important. Anyway, um, Thunderbolt. The Thunderbolt was always a quick tank, but it was not quick at 95 kph, so this thing definitely got a boost. Very, very fast, very mobile gun platform with even a bit of armor as it now has nine hit points, sorry, nine frontal uh, armor. Again, not frontline units. Um, you lead with the SA2, uh, sorry, with the SEP, maybe a couple of standard Abrams, the M1A1s. Uh, <laughs> sorry, what I now consider the standard Abrams in this mod. Um, and something else that I wanted to draw your attention to was the M1A1 FEP, and not specifically this vehicle, because the M60 has it too. Smoke dischargers. You can now use a tank, and if it gets into trouble, you just put down a smoke screen. Range on these is very, very low, 245 meters, meaning it's just a couple of smoke canisters being thrown out from the tank, but it does work. And these things, especially if you're being attacked by, for example, a helicopter group or an ATGM aircraft, can save your tank. Now, not all of them have it. If you look at the M21HC, it doesn't come with it. The FEP does, uh, the M60-120 does. So you're going to have to be quite picky if you want this particular feature on your tank. Recon. Um, again, like with the command infantry, we can now use the Humvee Tow 2. Uh, there's also what's called the Supercat Jackal. 
I'm not familiar with this vehicle, but I like what it's carrying. Because this is a... Let me hold the stats. It's a recon vehicle coming with medium stealth. Very good off-road speed and road speed and autonomy. Good optics. And it comes with three javelin missiles, which attack once again from the top. Fire and forget. You need to be stationary to fire them. But once they're fired, you can just scoot. Just don't even wait for the missiles to hit the target, because they're going to do that all by themselves. Now the M113 Elint um, comes equipped with very good optics. Again, medium stealth. Uh, Elint, as far as I know, is electronic intelligence. I'm not exactly sure how that is portrayed in this particular vehicle. It's... Uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to be too capable of intercepting enemy radio signals or radio chatter along those lines, but uh, it does come with very good optics, which is more than most of the units do. Other than that, um, yeah, we have Marine Force Recon. Look at these guys. Five-man team, coming equipped with an anti-material sniper rifle, doing two points of armor piercing. Also has the S-RAW. Um, short range anti-tank weapon or anti-vehicle weapon attacking topside. So um, I have had it happen that the Marine Force Recon or Delta Force, which also I believe carry this weapon, or actually no, they probably carry Javelin. Anyway, Marine Force Recon were one-shotting transports. Simply at 700 meter range they attacked vehicles from the top and they just one-shot them. Just not a chance there. Um, let's see... Yeah, the MQ-8B Fire Scout. This is supposed to be an unmanned helicopter, an unmanned scout. And you can see that it has the right unit card. It doesn't have the right model, and that has to do with the fact that models cannot be changed, or at least not as easily. S-97 Raider. Um, exceptional optics on this thing. Medium stealth. 540 kph. Hello. That's faster than some aircraft out there exceptional optics on a medium stealth platform. This thing is going to be a disaster to fight. Uh, you really need to take down this thing ASAP or you're going to find that all of your units get spotted all of the time and you might not even know where the fight is or where the uh, spotting risk is coming from. Next we have Navy SEALs. They haven't been changed too much. They've gotten some new weapons and they have, of course, their grenade launcher with them. What I really, really love is that they have the Comanche in here. The RAH-66 Comanche. Um, I used to play Comanche 4 quite a lot back in the day. If you know about that game, then uh, you probably have some fond memories of it as well. This thing is a very, very mixed bag in the sense that it can attack any sort of target. You can engage infantry and vehicles with a Gatling gun. It has one point of AP. Uh, it is also an indirect shot may provide indirect fire above obstacles. Now I'm not exactly sure how this affects gameplay, but it's a nice all-round weapon to have on this particular platform. If you're dealing with vehicles that you absolutely positively need dead, then you fire a Hellfire Romeo at it, and if an enemy helicopter comes too close, you just load up the stingers and you fire back at them. Of course, the Comanche was known for its very stealthy profile, and that's why it has a very good stealth, very good optics. So again, um, like the S-97 Raider, it's not as fast. In fact, it's about half as fast. But this thing has very good stealth versus medium stealth. So you can keep this thing slightly further back and be spotting targets with its exceptional optics. It just won't fight. This thing is more of what I think a flanker slash frontline recon unit. Um, heavy Rangers with several different transports, such as the M1126 Striker, uh, the Striker Javelin, because why wouldn't you put an artillery, sorry, an AT weapon on your recon unit or recon transport. Quickly going on to vehicles, because I can already see this, v or this uh, video becoming extremely long. The LV25 A2, um, I think it's been upgraded, but I'm not exactly sure how much. LVTP7 A1, everyone's favorite transport unit. The M1128 mobile gun system, um, I believe also known as the Striker, but I'm not entirely up to speed on the different unit designations. 
The AMPV, I think I mentioned. Um, yeah, artillery platforms, mortars mostly are now in here. And of course, this being the armory, you're also going to see the Bradleys, which you cannot select from the vehicle tab, at least not most of them. Most of them you can just get from the infantry section. Uh, the CEV has been changed. It has been rebuffed up to its old range of 2450. Still does a very high amount of HE damage. And of course, it is still not something that you really want to have off-road at 40 kph. But I'm very happy that they once again reinstated the 2450 range. Other than that, I don't think we have any new vehicles of particular note in this tab. Um, come to think of it, the LAV AD. This thing... Wow, it can engage everything. I must have missed this when I was setting up the US deck that I used. Uh, it's very good at off-roading, very good at road speed, and it's amphibious at 50 kph. Comes equipped with 8 stingers and the Gatling gun, which can engage ground targets, helicopters, and airplanes. Accuracy is not that high, but at least it's not radar guided, so you don't have to be too concerned about that. And um, it even comes with a stabilizer, so as you're moving along at 100 to 150 kph, you can still fire at your target. But at that accuracy, I wouldn't recommend it. Helos. Let's start out with the Hunter Killers, the Apaches. Um, you may find that the Hydra icon, or the icon for the rocket pods in general, has been changed. Other than that, it's still the same rocket pod. It's still the same damage dealer. What has been changed is the JCM. Um, it says it's a surface-to-air missile, but that's not accurate. This is an anti-tank weapon. Fire and forget, electro-optical, very high armor penetration, 75% um, accuracy. These things also fly extremely quickly, so you're very likely to hit your target. Uh, let's see, the little bird hasn't been changed. Um, the pave low I already mentioned as a recon helo that comes with your infantry. Yeah, here it is, the AH-1Z Viper. Comes equipped with a Vulcan cannon and a bunch of rocket pods. It's not particularly dangerous in that sense. But if there is even a single hole in your AA net, then this thing will find it and fly right through it. 350 kph. These things are going to be hard to catch once they're behind your lines. And finally, the air tab. Um, a lot has changed here. A-10 Thunderbolt. This is still the same one, but they also have the Thunderbolt 2, which now comes equipped with a couple of AIM-9s. So in case you're dealing with something like a helicopter that happens to be in the same area as where you're killing off the enemy tanks, then this thing might do a drive-by. I also think that the rate of fire on the Avenger autocannon has been changed. I'm not uh, convinced that it used to be 13,000 rounds a minute in the standard version of Wargame. I don't think so. Other noteworthy units are the Weasel. Um, important note again is the seed changes in this particular mod. As uh, I'm going to pull up the Prowler here. You can see that some of these aircraft are equipped with jammer pods. And these jam anti-air radar systems. So those incredibly long range weapon systems such as the Patriot they are no longer capable of targeting you and they will start to panic meaning that they are going to be completely ineffective at firing at your aircraft. And these things generally from what I've seen outrange any ground based radar system and this allows the Prowler to get into range and then fire off the anti-radiation missile. The Weasel Plus also comes with an anti-radiation missile, but does not come with these jammer pods, meaning it's going to be at greater risk. But what it does come with is the GBU-53 small diameter bomb. Fire and forget, uh, very good range. This thing is almost a missile. It attacks from the top, and considering that you have six of these things mounted to the wings of this aircraft, and that they do 13 AP apiece, that means that you're probably going to be able to one-shot tanks. Uh, transports, definitely, but this could very well be the next tank killer. Also take note of the ECM at 60%. Um, let's see, we have, and again, don't take too much note of the unit model itself. 
Uh, this is the Phantom Ray, pretty much the replacement for the F-117 stealth fighter. This one is a drone, and it still comes equipped with a couple of Paveway 3s, still doing the same amount of damage. Ground or anti-ground range has been improved. Still exceptional stealth, still not very fast, but um, at least they paid some attention to it and it has been improved in that sense, or it has been upgraded to a newer year, 2007 here. And then the Raptor. Again, it's not the Raptor, I know, this is an Eagle. But you simply cannot change unit models without some sort of help from the devs. The F-22 comes with an anti-air range of more than 10 kilometers. This thing is one of those aircraft that you just have circling over your own base. Um, you can keep it there for three minutes, by the way. The enemy won't know it's there, because it is exceptional stealth. If there is any sort of aircraft that might come your way, then either the uh, Drad M will take it down at long range with fire and forget missiles, allowing the Raptor to escape, or your Raptor will chase it down at a speed of 1400 kilometers. Trying to fire missiles at this thing, um, it does work. I can guarantee you that. I have had these things shot down. But they will dodge most of the missiles. Unless you're sending them into high missile territory. But simply starting with 70% ECM and exceptional stealth means that they're unlikely to find you until you fire. And even if you fire, they're unlikely to hit you. Also room for the F-35B and the F-35C. Um, these come with the joint standoff weapon, if that is the correct uh, abbreviation for it. Again, it's a top attacking weapon, very long range, almost 8 kilometers, meaning that in the smaller maps, you fly this aircraft in, you drop right pretty much over your own fob, and you leave. And the enemy, unless they have some extremely long range anti-air system, will not even have a chance to fire at you. Again, comes with a very good stealth. Both of these do. Um, the F-35C Navy, slightly different, as it does not really seem to go for ground targets, but is a simple air superior fighter, purely dedicated to taking down aircraft at long range at that. I mean, taking down even a helicopter at 4 kilometer range is impressive. And I think that pretty much concludes the US section. Um, there are definitely units that I haven't covered yet, but I don't want to spoil everything and give everything away. Finally, let's move on to the Naval tab. And even here, there have been some changes, not just to the standard units that you can call in, but also to the ships. So I'm going to zoom in particularly on these ships. Uh, not the supply, I'll take the coastal commands. And there used to be escort ships, but where the hell did those go? Huh, is that... Okay, we're going to have to do this manually. Um, independence. These are, again, very, very good in the ECM department. Coming with 16, mind you, 16 long-range harpoon missiles. I have no idea how they fire these things. Might just be through that front launcher, as they do not seem to be sporting any quad launchers on the stern of the ship. It also comes with the uh, SM-1 MR Block V, or the Block 5, which can shoot down missiles. Also carries 16 of these. But keep in mind that the ship will likely launch more than one missile at an incoming anti-ship missile, meaning that while it will defend itself, it will quickly run out of these. Also, take a note of the price change, 75 points. Uh, the Tomcat ATF. Uh, looks like it got a, another buff to the range. There's the Super Hornet. Nothing too special there. Let's see. Um, of the artillery section, some of these artillery units can do three round bursts. But I don't think that the US has any. The Monitor looks like it hasn't been changed. Neither has the Monitor Zippo. There's the, you can even call it a Patriot. Okay. Yeah, no, that's all of them. Meaning that most of the ships 
are no longer available to the US. They just have the independence class. Which, come to think of it, might be an indicator for the littoral combat ships or the LCSs that the US Navy is now testing out. So that might be it. Anyway, um, judging by the time and seeing that we're already coming up on 30 minutes, I'm going to end it here. And I'll be doing a separate video on uh, some of the other nations, which, judging by this video and knowing how much there is to cover, might turn into more than one video. Um, let me know what you think of the mod so far. I will not be going how, uh, in on how to install this mod, as the mod uh, author has done a very, very good job at explaining that on the page where you can download it. So I'm just going to ignore any answer or any question on that. It's very easy. Uh, you just download it and install it for the instructions. That's all that you need to do. Keep in mind, you cannot join a standard multiplayer game with this mod. You will simply desync and the game is going to kick you out. So only play this either in skirmish, uh, potentially in campaigns if you're feeling up for that, or if you have other players with you who are doing this thing, uh, who are running this mod, then you can play it with them in a private lobby. Anyway, that covers it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are down below, and I'll see you soon for more videos.